A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that the whole world should be enrolled. This was the first enrollment, when Quirinius was governor of Syria. So all went to be enrolled, each to his own town. And Joseph too went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David that is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and family of David, to be enrolled with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. While they were there, the time came for her to have her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Now there were shepherds in that region living in the fields and keeping the night watch over their flock. The angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were struck with great fear. The angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I proclaim to you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For today, in the city of David, a Savior has been born for you who is Christ and Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find an infant wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there is a multitude of the heavenly host with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. The Gospel of the Lord. Cole Porter, the famous American composer and lyricist, was noted for his generosity. One Christmas, Porter gave to 20 of his friends some paintings that he had purchased from a little old lady living near his estate. Porter's friends were taken aback, thinking that the composer had acted out of character by doing something, shall we say, on the cheap. Why would he be giving them paintings done by an obscure octogenarian who had spent her whole life as a farm wife and had started painting in her late seventies. Years later, Porter's friends must have smiled apologetically at their initial reaction. The little old lady from whom Porter had purchased the gifts paintings had found great fame in the intervening years. Her name was Anna Mary Robertson Moses, better known simply as Grandma Moses, and the composer's friends had in their possession pictures famous in the art world as American primitives that had become quite valuable. Today, we celebrate a gift whose value when it was first given was surely underestimated. It is only with hindsight that the gospel writers can say of Jesus, we saw his glory the glory as of the Father's only Son. It's hard, my friends, to imagine that the shepherds of the Christmas legend peered into that stable and knew the significance of what they were seeing, knew that they were privileged to behold God incarnate. To say that God's entrance into the world was unassuming is an understatement of the highest order. Though we Christians prefer not to dwell on it, this feast is a celebration of the improbable indeed, the seemingly impossible. We believe that the greatest gift imaginable, God's self-giving, came into the world in poverty and obscurity. Only over time would people begin to realize the value and significance of what God had done in the person of Jesus. Many of us were given the gift of Jesus our baptismal faith inheritance, at an early age. We've grown up with it, become used to it, and may even have begun to take it for granted. It is, however, a gift whose richness and value is inexhaustible. It may not look like much, this Christmas faith of ours, but if we hang on to it, it will inevitably see its unsurpassed value. My sisters and brothers, may the Spirit of God prevail in our homes and hearts every night and every day. May the song of the angels be sung and heard with joy in every season of the new year. Peace on earth to all God's people. 
a blessed Christmas to you and yours.